Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and today we're going to be talking about a transportation system. Now usually when people hear about uh, a transportation system, immediately the thing that comes to mind is a highway or a railroad system or maybe a harbor or an airplane or an airport. Uh, but today we're talking about a uh, transportation system that's actually much more complicated than any of these uh, and it is one that we all carry around with us uh, in our bodies. And I'm talking of course about the circulatory system. It is the transportation system that brings uh, all of the necessary materials to all of the 100 trillion cells that make up you. Uh, and it does this 24 hours a day, 365 days a year non-stop. This is a good place to update the organization of your notebook uh, and here we go. Um, the first thing to understand that we're going to be doing is we're going to be diagramming uh, the circulatory system. Now don't worry, the diagram that we'll be drawing will be considerably less complicated than the one that you see now. Uh, it will be just about the simplest um, diagram that, that I know of uh, but it will take up a full sheet of page or a full a full sheet. So what I'd recommend is that you make the diagram on the left side and then add any uh, written notes um, on the on the right hand side. Okay, to start diagramming the uh, the circulatory system, first thing it is useful to know that it's a, it is a transportation system. Uh, you can just draw the familiar shape of a heart right in the middle of the page and uh, you want to keep enough room to, to add some labels as we uh, as we go along. Um, you may know that our heart has a left and a right side um, and this is no mistake what you see in front of you is correct. Uh, on your left hand side is the right side of the heart that you are looking at and your right hand side is the left side of the heart that you're looking at. Uh, if this seems confusing um, just keep in mind that this would be uh, that you would be looking at would be a patient's right hand side or a person's right side um, and so this side over here is the is the person you are looking at's right side and so this is the right side of this person's heart um, over here which is your right hand side is the left side of this heart that you're looking at Okay, now that we've got that squared away, uh, the other thing that is useful to know is that the heart also has, well, the heart is basically a pump. Uh, and like any pump, uh, we have to first get uh, liquid into the pump and then it will be pumped out. And our heart has a upper chamber, which we call atria. Atria is the plural term, A-T-R-I-A. -A. Uh, singular, it is an atrium and blood always enters in through the atria or the or the one of the atriums either the left or the right in this case we have blood coming in uh, into the right atrium and you'll notice that I've drawn this in blue that indicates that this is uh, blood which has a very low oxygen level uh, so the blood comes into the right atrium and then it uh, goes through a uh, a valve into the right ventricle. Uh, ventricles are the exit chambers of the heart uh, and once blood moves from the right atrium into the right ventricle, the ventricle contracts uh, and pumps the blood out through the ventricle. Um, anytime blood leaves the heart, it is always carried away from the heart in an artery. Uh, if you know anybody in the Navy, you may know that the Navy song is Anchors Away. Uh, and if you just change the words a little bit uh, to be arteries away, uh, that will help you to remember that arteries always carry blood away from the heart. So anytime we're in a blood vessel which is, uh, in, and the blood is moving away from the heart, we are in an artery. Well, uh, the first artery uh, that the blood leaves from the right ventricle, uh, it leaves in an uh, artery called the pulmonary artery. Now, the word pulmonary may not be familiar to you, but the one thing that you um, will need to know is that the word pulmonary refers to our lungs. So if we are in a blood vessel going away from the heart, and the blood vessel that we are in is a pulmonary artery, uh, we know that the blood has to be going somewhere. Uh, and you might make a guess that 
where the blood is going would be to the lungs and you would of course be correct so uh, this is um, very low oxygen blood and it's going to the lungs so the thing that will be happening in, in the lungs is that oxygen will be diffusing into the blood uh, and carbon dioxide will be diffusing out of the blood so your lungs as you probably know is where your uh, where your blood gets oxygen and where uh, carbon dioxide wastes are removed um, so when the blood leaves the lungs um, we now draw it red okay um, anytime blood is going back towards the heart it is in a vein arteries and veins are very different they have very different structures uh, and veins always carry blood towards the heart arteries away veins carry blood towards the heart um, uh, so since this is blood which is leaving the lungs and coming back to the heart uh, and we know that it's in a vein uh, and we know that the word pulmonary means lung uh, you can take a guess as to what the name of this vein is uh, and if you guess that this is the pulmonary vein you are absolutely correct so we bring high oxygen blood now back to the uh, left atrium of the heart so now we're entering uh, in the left side of the heart and we have high oxygen blood coming in there um, and it's coming from the lungs so now from the left atrium uh, the blood entered through an atrium and so it's going to exit from what chamber if you guessed the uh, left ventricle you would be correct now one thing that you should know about the left ventricle of the heart is that it is much thicker than the right ventricle and if you think about this this really makes sense uh, you probably know that your lungs are in your chest and that your heart is also in your chest uh, and so from the right ventricle the uh, heart doesn't have very far to pump the blood it's only pumping it to the lungs uh, and the blood returns from the lungs back to the left atrium now when it leaves the left ventricle um, that chamber of the heart has the job of pumping it everywhere to every single uh, through every artery and every capillary and every vein in your body so it has to go to your brain uh, all of your muscles all of your internal organs everywhere which is why um, the left ventricle has a much thicker wall a much stronger muscle because when it pumps it has to pump blood a long way um, when blood leaves the left ventricle it enters into the largest artery in the body again it's an artery why well because it is going away from the heart uh, and it, the largest blood vessel is called the aorta it's the largest uh, artery in the body and it is a branch point it branches off uh, there are several other arteries also very large arteries that carry blood to your brain uh, to your arms the upper part of your body uh, and then there are other major branches that carry blood to your internal organs uh, and also um, to your legs and lower extremities um, but the aorta is the main branch point for all of these other uh, destinations where blood is going so um, so at this point we have a whole series of arteries that branch off in every direction carrying blood um, like I said up to your brain uh, into every other part of your body okay so we've drawn in uh, your head and and the body and, and of course in this diagram they're a little bit disjointed uh, but that's to keep our diagram uh, fairly simple now when the blood gets to um, this part of the body um, we're going to have just the opposite of what happened in the lungs and that is that um, oxygen is going to diffuse out of the blood and into the cells carbon dioxide is going to be leaving the cells and going into the blood um, so we've drawn this here to show that um, oxygen is leaving the blood being picked up by the cells carbon dioxide is leaving the cells and diffusing into the blood um, since this happens when the blood leaves uh, the the body cells whether they are in the lower part of the body or the upper part of the body uh, as you might guess it's no longer going to be colored red but is now going to be colored blue um, as it makes its way back through a whole series of veins it will eventually come back to the largest vein in the body uh, which we call the vena cava the vena cava um, there is an upper and lower vena cava 
um, that collects blood coming back from the upper vena cava, collects blood coming from the upper part of the body, the lower vena cava collects blood coming back from the lower part of the body. Whole series of veins um, which uh, bring blood back to the heart. Uh, and once it comes through the vena cava, the next place is to the right atrium. Uh, and now you see that this whole process cycles around again. So we have, um, as you notice, we have um, two distinct circuits of the blood. One of them comes uh, into the vena cava through the heart back up to the lungs, and we call this the pulmonary circuit. As it leaves the heart, comes to the lungs, and comes back to the heart, this is the pulmonary circuit. Uh, the pulmonary circuit, the idea is to um, get blood to the, uh, to the lungs, pick up oxygen, get rid of carbon dioxide. The next circuit is called the systemic circuit. Um, the systemic circuit, blood leaves the heart, goes everywhere else in the body, uh, and then comes back to the heart through the right atrium. Okay, so this gives you uh, the, the broad overview of how our circulatory system works. Um, we have a four-chambered heart that carries, uh, in, in one circuit, carries uh, blood to the lungs, and in the other circuit carries blood every other, uh, everywhere else in the body. Okay, one of the questions uh, that I often get is, why do we draw hearts in this particular little shape if they don't really look like that? Um, and I'm not sure, I've heard a variety of different theories as to why uh, we draw hearts in this particular shape, um, but it turns out that it actually does have a, a, a rather um, vague sense of, uh, of realism compared to a real heart. Uh, you can see that um, it more or less, um, our, our, our heart is more or less triangular, uh, comes to a point down at the bottom, uh, and then the right ventricles and le uh, left ventricles with this septum that I was telling you about that goes down uh, up through the middle, uh, and then the upper chambers are divided by um, these valves, which uh, keep the blood from going backwards and um, only allow the blood flow to, to go in one direction. Um, don't worry, you're not going to have to draw this diagram, but I do want you to see, uh, to get a little bit of an idea of um, what the, uh, the structure of the heart actually looks like. Here you see the aorta. Uh, it doesn't look really anything at all like the way that, that I drew it uh, in, in our little diagram, but you see that it is the largest artery and it has these branch points where blood uh, goes everywhere else. Okay, um, so at this point we're going to zoom in a little bit for a closer look at some parts uh, of the body. And, and where we're going to zoom in is this region right here. Uh, and what we want to actually see now is the different types of blood vessels and what happens when uh, we go from being in an artery, uh, as you saw we were in an artery here, uh, and then suddenly we were in a vein. And there are actually three different types of blood vessels. Um, blood in, in our bodies is always in a vessel. We have what's called a closed circulatory system, so blood is always in a vessel, and we have three types of vessels. Um, so if we zoom in now um, to this, it would be this would represent a. Um, I'm going to hold this up for just a minute. This would represent a whole bunch of body cells. Uh, and blood is going to be coming in from the right-hand side, coming to the cells, and then going out on the left side. Um, so, as we said, blood is carried away from the heart in an artery, so that means that blood is carrying, being carried towards the body cells in, a, in an artery, away from the heart towards the body cells. And as you can see, it branches off into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller arteries. So. Um, from the aorta, which this would represent over on the right-hand side, uh, we, we branch off, branch off again, 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 until we gradually get to these very tiny little blood vessels, which are called capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels. They, the walls of the capillaries are only one cell thick, um, and they are very tiny, and blood uh, only passes through them. Basically, the blood cells have to line up single file. They're very tiny. Um, and this is where the actual work of the 
uh, of the circulatory system happens. Um, in capillaries is where materials diffuse out of the cell and into the blood. This is where wastes leave the cell, go into the blood, and where uh, minerals and uh, raw materials that the cell needs um, leave the blood and diffuse into the uh, into the cell. So the capillaries, I use an analogy of being kind of like a driveway. Uh, if an artery is like a, a, a highway, a super highway, uh, you don't uh, get, get a pizza delivered on US 60. Uh, the, the pizza delivery guy has to first get off the highway onto a major road such as, such as Chrisman, uh, and then onto maybe a smaller road, and then drives into your uh, subdivision, uh, and then gradually gets to the driveway. And in your driveway, that is where the, the, the delivery is made. That's where the, uh, the goodie comes from. Uh, our, our transportation system or the delivery van and into your house which would represent the cell. Okay, after leaving the capillaries blood is going to return through veins uh, and just as arteries branched progressively smaller and smaller and smaller uh, coming away from the heart, veins branch progressively larger and larger and larger as they carry blood back towards the heart. So this would represent the aorta over here, the largest artery, and this would be the vena cava over on this side, which is the largest vein. Okay, we're going to zoom in one more time, uh, and we're going to take an even closer look at, uh, at, at the cells. And so uh, if this were to represent a capillary, okay, and you can see this would be a blood cell, uh, and these, of course, up here would represent body cells. Um, so if that's the case, then we have this... Um, constant stream of um, blood cells which are coming through the capillary uh, and so you see that here so the blood cells are making their way through the capillary and as they do that uh, carbon dioxide which is a waste produced by the cells is diffusing out of the cells and into the blood where it's carried away the other thing that is happening is oxygen is diffusing out of the blood and into the cells. Notice that the blood itself never actually leaves the uh, leaves the um, leaves the capillary. Blood travels through the capillary, but it's the oxygen um, that diffuses outward. So that means that we have a higher concentration of oxygen in the uh, in the blood than we do in the cells, and we have a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the cell. Uh, than we do in, in the blood. So again, oxygen is diffusing into the body cells out of the blood. Carbon dioxide is diffusing out of the body cell. I'm sorry, I think I said that backwards. Oxygen is diffusing out of the blood and into the cells. Carbon dioxide is diffusing out of the cells and into the blood. As that happens, what do you suppose we get? Well, what do we get? Well, we get happy cells. That's what we get. So on that note, uh, with our happy cells here that are getting their carbon dioxide taken away and getting oxygen through their blood, uh, I'm going to leave this at this point. Um, and this has been uh, a vodcast for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. And I hope you have a great day.